Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, what's up? It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up guys? So, I am coming through today with a special reading um, and a conversation. So, buckle in, or buckle up, settle in, um, grab yourself a snack, drink or two if you want, smoke them if you got them, because um, I do want to talk about you know, some things before I actually get to cards. So this might be a little bit of a lengthy reading. Um, but this is really just supposed to be a conversation. Also with, also with a look into the energies of what's going on for us. Post Pisces full moon. Yeah. Um, mum, mum, mum. I do have some notes here that I want to use to, to keep me in track. Um, so first thing I want to start with is uh, a little bit of information that I've kind of channeled and come to understand, which was inspired by some information that Aluna Ash put out. Um, and actually, she spoke a little bit about this in her energy update for today, uh, the 28th of August. Um, right? It's the 28th, yeah? Yes. Yeah, the... no, wait, wait, wait. No, no. It's the 29th, you guys. There's that. Um, but, uh, she posted an energetic update today for August 29th and she touched on this a little bit, which was, which was a little bit, um, reassuring because I had already wanted to talk about this. I was like, oh God, I don't know if I should do that. And then she posted and she talked, supposed spoke about it more. So I was like, okay, okay, good. We're on the same page. <laughs> but so in essence, the moon itself has been hijacked. Dun, dun, da. Yes. But it's not like, it's not that well. Depends on your perspective, but what Aluna initially said that sparked this this in, this um, thought within me. What she originally mentioned was when she was uh, channeling or she was getting some clairvoyant messages, in which she was seeing the moon and she was seeing a construct being built on the moon, and that immediately for me sent off um, sparks, and I started like thinking about it and seeing kind of kind of seeing what she was saying. Um, about how, you know, there were entities that have taken over, have built almost, it's almost like a massive satellite structure on the moon. Um, and the, or like a, yeah, satellite is, yeah, that works. Um, and what happens is over the cycle of the full moon system from, you know, full moon to full moon, there is a buildup, a charge up of energy and, um, Oftentimes you'll, you can, like, if you really look, you can see how, you know, some, like, things will just bubble and, and boil, energies will start to, to amass and co congeal, congeal, I guess you can say, come together and form, uh, um, come together and then, like, explode, open, or out, um, once the moon goes full. Why does this happen? Uh, well... There are entities within the fourth dimension, and this is something that I've actually touched on briefly in the past. I'm going to try and go into a little bit more detail today, um, but there are these entities in the fourth dimension, whoops, wrong way, um, that are very much rooted, <clears throat> sorry guys, I'm trying to adjust my chair, um, very much rooted in the fourth dimension, don't want to leave the fourth dimension. Actually, they can't leave the fourth dimension. Why? Because they have cut themselves off from source. They are very much working to keep everyone... I'm so sorry, guys. I'm just trying to get settled here. They're working very hard to keep everyone in um, separate separation consciousness, whereas source's ultimate goal is for everyone to move into unity consciousness, right? So these fourth dimensional beings are highly technologically advanced, extremely intelligent, um, and really want nothing to do with source, uh, uh, um, nothing to do with unity. They just want to remain energetic vampires. You definitely can call them that. Um, and what they've been doing is they have manipulated human DNA, human DNA, excuse me, They've, they've manipulated our DNA. They have um, basically re 
downgraded us, I want to say, um, from our galactic human status to less than that. What is a galactic human? A galactic human is uh, was who we were originally, very much open and connected with source and with our psychic and um, multi our psychic powers, multidimensional reality, very much connected with all that stuff. In a nutshell, like that's that's just like a super watered down description. We can talk about that later, what that actually means, but. They, these fourth dimensional beings have done this in an effort to continue to control, to siphon energies from us, to sustain their existence. Because in maintaining their separation from source, they basically cut themselves off from what gives them their life to begin with. And so in order to survive, they have to siphon life from others. And that's what's been going on. So that's so, so I, I'm, I'm saying all this to say that the, the hijacking of the moon is a um, form of mind control. It's one of the many different ways that, that there have been sis, uh, energetic uh, systems in place like what we call the matrix. Um, it all serves to control us, to control our minds, to uh, keep us feeding into this competitive separate separation consciousness that our society our species as humans has been plagued by <laughs> for a very long time centuries um okay so what does this mean in in terms of the moon well um as we move through these moon cycles things will build up energies will build up situations will build up and come to a head and then basically explode around the full moon and when this happens all of this energy then get siphoned or uh, collected um, and drawn into one central source or many different sources. Where are these, what are these sources? I don't know. What I do know is these are meant to feed whatever. It could really be anything. I haven't tapped into that yet. I haven't gotten any information about that yet. Uh, to be quite honest, I don't think I want that information because if I were to see what that was, it would probably freak me the fuck out and I wouldn't like it. <laughs> but I might, you know, in the future, if it's necessary, I might get that information to share with you guys so that we understand. But so the moon has been hijacked. And this is something that really made sense to me one day. I was walking around and I was thinking about it and I was like, oh my God, it really has been hijacked. Why? Well, think of it this way. There was this one, I think it was the Sagittarius full moon where I posted on my Facebook page I uh, some some stupid like uh, full moon tonight um, you can catch me on the roof dancing and howling dot 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 because I'm a werewolf now I have always really loved werewolves I'm I'm a big wolf type person a big dog person also a cat person but werewolves have always been a topic of interest or intrigue for me uh, more so than vampires. Yeah, like I liked vampires. I liked the idea of being all like sexy and sensual and being able to like fly and like, but then you have to like suck people's blood just to survive. And it's like, meh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but werewolves I was cool with, right? But I've always, I've always identified it because, identified with it because when the moon goes full, you know, me, just like many other people, whether you're an empath, psychic, or not, or you don't really identify with those types of things, things just kind of go crazy for everybody during the full moon. And to me, that was like that aha moment. I was like, oh shit, no wonder we got this idea of werewolves, of people turning into monsters during the full moon. Why? Because our emotions are already volatile. And we have this structure in place that is that is purposefully building up these energies in order to siphon them for God knows what. Okay, um, and I don't. I, I already feel people getting anxious about. Well, God, what are they doing with that energy? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All you need to know is what's actually going on so that you can consciously remove yourself from that. Yes, awareness is a big part of this. As soon as you become aware that this cycle is happening and what you are feeling isn't isn't really you, it's not something that, that you're not wrong, you're not crazy, you're not like psycho or whatever, 
it's these entities that are using their mind control techniques to siphon our negative energy, to siphon our life force away from us in order to maintain theirs. That's one major thing that they're doing with this energy. I don't know what else they're doing with it, but I'm hearing things. Um, they're feeding certain experiments. They're feeding certain processes, certain... Um, research that they're doing, their energy, you know, they're using this energy from us to maintain their agenda, to put forth their agenda, these fourth dimensional beings. Um, you can say some of them are reptilian. I don't really know of much of the other actual species that are doing this. Reptilians are one of them. I do know that. Um, but keep in mind, not all reptilians are bad. I don't want to like, some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Some of them are neutral. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, back to the point. So, um, so it makes sense. Well, it, it, it started to make sense to me about how, you know, we have this concept of werewolves and it's like no wonder because these energies are actively being siphoned from us. We are being driven unconsciously. And this is why I'm saying it is very much necessary for you to be aware of this, that this is happening, because you can't actually stop it, okay? Or you can at least defend yourself from it. You don't have to feed into it, okay? Once you start to feel like the energies are getting really bad and you're getting really anxious, angry, um, you're just dealing with a lot of low vibrational energies, um, you can recognize that this is a part of this cycle of siphoning energy that's happening and consciously not give into it. Even though you might be feeling it, you don't have to feed into it. You don't have to feel like this is actually you going through something. This is more so, more likely a projection in order for you to feed into it and then they can siphon these energies from you. Okay, that's, I hope you, I hope that makes sense. Um, all right, so moving forward here, with that said, I wanna share a little bit of what I have personally gone through, just a little bit. Now, under, uh, I, I should have said this in the beginning, but this is um, this is gonna be a reading. Ugh. Whenever I get to it, it's gonna be a long one, just like I said, but it's not just for Twin Flames. This is for the human collective, okay? This is for everybody, all right? So, um, but there are some Twin Flame concepts that are gonna come up. Um, if you're a Twin Flame, you might resonate with this. If you don't know what a Twin Flame is, I, that's going to take a lot, I can explain it to you, but I don't want to do that in this video because it's already going to be a long one anyway. Um, I suggest maybe going doing some research. Um, there are a ton of great readers out there. You could, if you're new to my channel, you can dig into my readings. I do weekly twin flame readings and conversations. Um, you can get, start to get to the understanding of it that way. But twin flames briefly are a part of, uh, it's an experiment, uh, a galactic experiment that was put in place um, after the free will experiment went nuts. Um, what happened with the free will experiment? Well, these entities within the fourth dimension that have chosen to stay separate from source, chosen to stay within separation consciousness instead of moving towards unity consciousness, um, decided to manipulate things. Why? Because they had the free will to do so. Uh -huh. Now see, the thing about them is they can't get out of the fourth dimension because they have chosen to basically forsake Source, right? And if you do not have a connection with Source, if you are not connecting with unconditional love and that sort of thing, you can't move past the fourth dimension. It just you, you just are not a vibrational match to moving beyond the fourth dimension. And so it's really, it's really not even like they're being punished. They're kind of keeping themselves, that literally are choosing to keep themselves in this position um, and keep themselves from progressing, even though they've got all kinds of immense inte intelligence and technology, like they're extremely technologically advanced, obviously, but they can, because they can manipulate us um, and keep us in a low vibrational uh, situation, keep us from moving past third dimensional consciousness in which we would be able to perceive them, ha ha ha, you know what I mean? So... Obviously, they're crazy advanced, but in doing so, they are keeping themselves from progressing past the fourth dimension. And so, and in, in essence, they want us to stay here too. They don't even want us to cross into the fourth dimensional reality because once you cross into fourth dimensional reality, they can't hide anymore. There is no such thing as secrets once you cross into the fourth dimensional reality. The fourth dimension is all about transparency. Right? So they want to keep us in the third dimension so we can't even perceive that they're manipulating and controlling us. Mind control. Hello. Okay, great. So 
moving forward, um, I want to share a little bit about what I experienced. So we're going back to the blood moon, the eclipse. <coughs> Excuse me. During that eclipse, the blood full, the, the blood moon, and all that, about a month ago, I was triggered real hard, um, and I was triggered in a way by my twin. Um, in which I had reached like the ultimate form, ultimate level of detachment. Granted, it wasn't too healthy because of the energy that was being siphoned during the time. This was during that moon. This was during the week of that full moon. And I was triggered by my twin, um, or at least this person that I believe to be my twin, although spirit keeps just drilling it into my head. But anyway, um, I was triggered. And I spent that whole week stewing over the situation. Like, I was so incredibly angry. Like, I was starting to scare myself a little bit, how angry I was. Um, and even after, like, for a, the month after that, I mean, as time went on, the anger started to subside, but I was still feeling the energies. And it wasn't until this Pisces full moon that that finally started to subside. Um, we crossed paths again. And, um, I was very much a wall of ice, <laughs> but then after the situation, you know, that night, because we, we, it was early in the week that I crossed paths with him. And then that night is when the ice started to thaw. Now, what was this full moon about? The full moon was in Pisces. Pisces is the 12th sign of the zodiac. It's all about unconditional love, divine love, universal love. It's all about universe, uh, universe, unity consciousness, excuse me. Um, that's on the positive sides of things. So also, Pisces is a water sign. So Pisces, just like Scorpio and Cancer, are very much about the emotions. And what, are, what is the first thing one would think of when we talk about the emotions? Love. Okay, so Pisces, be also being the sign of unconditional love, divine love, and all that, um, this full moon really brought love to the forefront. Really brought love to the forefront. Sorry, guys, I just saw a number synchronicity. That's... <laughs> anyway, um... What kind of love? Unconditional love. Love for the self. Uh, romantic relationships. Friendships. Families. Um, anything, any sort of, it, it literally could even be business partnerships, um, because of the, the emotional stability or the emotional interaction needed between partners in order to function well in business together, right? So for me, this really kind of like, I, I was, I literally, over the last, over that last week, okay, because we crossed paths on Tuesday, over the last week up until Sunday, I was literally watching the universe chisel away at this cavern of ice I had built around myself, surrounding this person, and even surrounding him on an energetic, on a soul level, okay, there's something else I want to talk about there too, but I'll get there in a second. I had, I, that last triggering during the blood moon had closed me off so much, or I allowed it to, I'm going to say it that way. I allowed it to close me off so much that I didn't even want to in, interact with him on a, on a soul level, on an energetic level. Like I wanted nothing to do with him. Any t and I could feel his energy around. I could feel his soul, my divine masculine. This is why I'm saying he, I'm the feminine in the situation. If you're familiar with Twin Flames, you know what I'm talking about. If not, do the research or let me know in the comments section below and maybe I'll do a, a, a video on it about what I understand about the Twin Flame journey later. But my Divine Masculine, my Twin Flame, um, his energy and his soul was very much around me all the time. Um, but I had closed off so much that I didn't notice it anymore. I didn't want to notice it anymore. Um, and even as I'm saying this, I can feel the heartbreak coming from him, but ultimately all of this served a higher purpose. Um, I mean, like I was so detached that I, I, I'll damn near, I'll say I had, I kind of wish I had never met him, period. Um, <clears throat> but 
then I started to see things differently. My the blood, or I'm sorry, the red started to fade <laughs> from my eyes because I was so enraged, and I, it just. I started to see things clear, clearer. Um, like I started to understand that the way that I was triggered or what happened when I was triggered actually served a purpose because it got me to like step my game up at work a little bit, which, all right, cool. But I still was not, I still didn't appreciate the way it was brought to me. Especially, never mind. Um, I just, given the circumstances of our relationship, whatever you want to call it, um, I really didn't appreciate the way it was brought to me. Now, here's now here's the other part because this is what I learned. Now, okay, so so what happened helped me step my game up a little bit at work. Great, but then I was also started to see how we were mirroring each other because there were some things that I brought to him, some some ways that I had triggered him that I am very sure, and he, you don't you don't even have to tell me. I already know because I could feel it at the time, but um, he really did not appreciate it whatsoever did not appreciate it at all. And so now here I am being be, dealing with the same situation. I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right, I get it. I get it. Um, but I was still covered in ice. Still didn't even, whatever. So we cross paths and then that night the ice starts to melt and I start to let his energy back in again. And by the time we got to Sunday, which was actually the day of the full moon, I had found myself kind of back in that place of acceptance, of communicating with him energetically, telepathically, and all this stuff. This is the other thing I want to talk about. I saw a, a video, and unfortunately, I don't have it. Um, um, Angelic Guidance, I believe, is her name. I don't even have my phone. Where's my phone? Here it is. Uh, I want to share this. At least I'll at least share her name with you. I don't remember the name of the video, but um, I believe her name is Angelic Guidance. But she put out a video in which that really resonated with me. But um, I started to think about it. what she mentioned was, and I, I swear, I wish I had known this before, but... Um, if you are, if you're a twin flame and you're experiencing, um, you're experiencing telepathy, you're experiencing your twin coming around, being around you, you know, sleeping, laying in bed with you at night, watching you during the day, coming up to you during the day and like, you know, touching you, whispering in your ear, that kind of thing. It's not necessarily them. Okay. It depends if they're awake enough or if they, if they've, woken enough to understand that, you know, and be experiencing these things and like telepathy and all that stuff, um, then it could possibly be them. But when they're not awake, it's actually their soul. And I wish, girl, I wish I had known that before. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have made some mistakes that I had made. But, oh Lord, where is this woman? Um, I at least just want to share her name with you. But anyway, um, so... Knowing that, coming to that understanding, now I'm like, now that I'm reconnecting, I had reconnected at, around this full moon, I was like, oh, wow, okay, so, right, okay, so I'm connecting with your soul again, and, all right, cool, I guess, yeah, all right, that makes sense now. Um, but the thing about it, the thing, and now this is where we're going to get into some situations for the twins specifically. Um, I'm so sorry, I can't find her now, and I'm like, wasting time. But um, my fear was, now that I'm opening back up again, um, fall, slipping back into that obsessiveness, the the uh, the extreme longing, right? Um, and what I've come to understand is, especially after starting to really balance my masculine and feminine energies, and really getting connected with my masculine energies, um, I'm starting to feel the difference between the, the, the reality of the feminine and the reality of the masculine. The feminine being the one that's longing for reconnection, the masculine being detached, right? And so um, I want to mention before we... Yeah. Before, um, I'm, before I finish this part of the video, I want to mention that it's okay. It is okay to feel longing. 
it's okay to also be detached. But it's not, what you want to be careful of is longing for, um, longing in the sense that these, like, you can't go on with your life without this person, like, or this whatever you're longing for. It doesn't even have to be a person, you know. Um, feeling like having this, or having this specific circumstance in your life, this specific person, this specific thing, this, you know, that kind of thing, um, having this in your life completes you like you can't go on with your life without it that is an illusion okay and that's where the balance and the wholeness needs to come into play you also don't want to be so detached that you can't connect with anything or anyone that you lose your sense of feeling right these are the two extremes of fem masculine and feminine but when you come into like internal union physical uh, 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 individual union with yourself you can still feel that longing because you are aware of the value that this person or this thing or this this place brings into your life it doesn't mean but you're still detached enough where it doesn't mean that you, you they, that you are less than or you're incomplete because you don't have it you're not experiencing it at that moment no no you just recognize the value that it brings to your life and you just want to have it in your life that's that's where you want to be ultimately whether you're a twin flame or not if you're just looking for that ultimate partner that ultimate love you need to have a balance within yourself first you need to have that unconditional love that connection for yourself first and you need to find the value in you and express that and let that shine honor it yes love it and then you will come and then the universe will bring you somebody that can mirror that back to you and then so once you find that person work on maintaining your balance understand that yeah i'm good on my own but this person adds so much more to it that i i love and i want to have in my life and ultimately you know should you find the when you find the right person excuse me when you find the right person, you both will mirror that aspect of each other to each other, okay? You don't have to be a twin flame to experience that. Um, yeah. There's one last thing I want to talk about. But so, but when it comes to this full moon, um, I, the reason why I shared all of that was because I wanted, um, I wanted to give some perspective as to what this full moon actually is represents and how it's affecting us right now um and so i gave my personal some of my personal situation because i literally went from one extreme to the other between the moon cycle and most of that had to do with the energetic harvesting that was taking place okay um and i fed right into it let me tell you i fed right into it but it was that cycle of me feeding into it and and being an understanding and starting to come to the understanding that this was actually happening, this energy was actually being siphoned from me, now I can move forward in the future and work to keep that out of play, okay? Um, a great defense mechanism will be or is claiming your sovereignty, okay? Understanding and claim, claiming your energy, claiming your space, understanding that there are these structures these in, that are in place to manipulate us, to control us, to siphon our energy, and as long as you say, no, I'm not feeding into that, you don't have to worry about it. You'll still have to defend yourself like this past Sunday. Oh, and it's so crazy. Even this past Sunday with the with the, the, the video that I put out for the Twin Flame conversation, it was all about unconditional love and acceptance, taking responsibility for your own role in the situation and not just blaming others for it. Like understanding that everybody that acts from a place of negativity is acting from this way because they have been hurt in the past. They are acting from learned behaviors, okay? So in order for us as a human collective to heal, we have to understand that. We have to take that into account. That doesn't mean that you put yourself at risk. You put you make yourself so vulnerable that you're allowing these people to abuse. No. And that's actually part of the reason why I was such a wall of ice the last time I ran into my twin was because I could pick up energies of potentially being manipulated and I was not having it. It was not happening, okay? I wasn't going to engage and like make have a, like you know, start a fight or anything, but I I wasn't having it. Okay? That doesn't mean it doesn't mean I hate him. I understand what's going on. I understand why the things that have happened within our dealings with each other over this last year 
um, have happened the way they did from his point of view and from my point of view, like the, the crazy things I've done over this situation, right? You like, I get it now, I understand, but see, even with that in mind, that doesn't mean that you need to allow yourself to be manipulated, abused, whether that be physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever, you know, like, you, no, you put your foot down, you, you claim, you, 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 you put forth your healthy boundaries, you maintain those boundaries, and when they can switch it up a little bit, or say, if someone puts a boundary in front of you, and you have to do a switch up, so do it. Then you can reassess the situation, right? So this leads me to my last part. Now, this is also for twins specifically, but there have been a lot of people, I mean, a lot of us have been dealing with lately with this energy of feeling like this person that we were under the impression was our twin is not necessarily our twin, is probably a karmic partner, a false twin. In some situations, yes, that is the case. Um, but it's not the case in all situations. There was one question that I, that I got not too long ago that I also, I want to bring up again. It's the idea of whether our twins, uh, our twin flame can be a karmic partner or not. I want to say yes, that's, in, that's possible, but it's more so, especially if this is your true twin, it's more so about karmic lessons that need to be learned with your twin. So it may seem like they're a karmic partner, when in reality, you guys are just working through karmic cycles, karmic lessons with each other instead of with somebody else. And once these things are cleared up, then, you know, healing is happening, and blah, 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 and you guys can move forward on your journey, yeah? So I just wanted to touch on that briefly. It is entirely possible to work through karmic lessons with your twin. You don't have to have a separate partner, karmic partner, to work through all of your karmic energy, which is most likely what I've been going through. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's fine. Okay, so 30 minutes in. <laughs> let's get into the cards so I just want to get I want to pull this is just gonna be a quick card reading um, I'm using a tarot deck and then I'm also using I'm gonna pull some Oracle cards from well Oracle guidance it's kind of Oracle but I'm gonna be using the dreams of Gaia tarot this is a tarot deck but it's not a, a, a your traditional one um, so I'm using it in more of an oracle capacity. Also, because it's like my newest addition to the family. I love it so much. The artwork is so... I mean, look at... Just just look at that. The artwork in this deck, you guys, is so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, but I'm still trying to learn it. And this is definitely a deck that I want to use intuitively. I don't want to have to use the book all the time. It's going to take me a while. It's larger than the traditional tarot deck. Um, so this is why I'm using it in the sense or as like an oracle right now because I'm, I, I, I need to read the book sometimes. Um, yeah, so that's it. I was just wondering if I was going to use any other deck, but Spirit was like, no, end it with Dreams of Gaia. So cool. Yay. All right, guys. Let's get into it. Now, keep in mind, this is a general reading, and it's also for the whole collective, the human collective. This is not just for twin flames, okay? This is for everybody. Everybody! Yeah? Cool. Um, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep it short and cute. Um, I'm gonna do it like my normal freestyle reading, only instead of two columns, I'm just gonna do one column, because two columns is just gonna be too much information right now. We really, it just doesn't feel necessary because then also we're getting some Oracle guidance from the dreams of Gaia, which is pretty similar to the traditional tarot. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. <laughs> Let's get to it. Everybody settle in, take a deep breath. Hey spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the whole human collective. Please bring forward the best messages for us as humans, the human collective, to serve the highest good of all involved surrounding what we need to know about what we'll be experiencing post full moon in Pisces this past August, 2018. Wow. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, so I'm seeing purple initially. Um, 
And that is very much in a line in in line with you know divine wisdom, um, psychic ability, universal love, compassion. Um, it's it just it just screams Pisces energy to me because of the because of the um, universal wisdom vibration I'm getting from it. And Pisces is very much about, you know, oneness, collective, um, unity. So already I feel like many of us are going to be moving through these post full moon energies. We're going to be getting a lot of divine wisdom. Like here's, this is why I shared my part of, you know, what's what happened with me personally over this last moon cycle. It was completely an aha moment for me. It was a lesson in um, um, unconditional love, compassion, um, you know, just being there for people, being supportive, understanding that people go through shit. People go through shit, guys. And just because they're acting like they're, I mean, just because their actions might be shitty, doesn't mean that at their core, they're a bad person. You know, you, we all need to understand that. We need to see these personality disorders, um, personality imbalances, energetic imbalances as, number one, something that is not a lifelong curse, I guess you could call it, not a lifelong uh, situation. It can be cured. It can be healed. Of course, it does take the effort of the person exhibiting these um, tendencies or whatnot to take it upon themselves to do the work to, to heal. And if they're not doing that work, all you really need to do is move forward gracefully with love in your heart, with compassion in your heart, pray for them if you want to, but don't hold resentment towards them because they're going through a hard time. Okay. It might be shitty that they did, that they're deciding not to do it, but also what you might not understand is what it might take the things they might have to face in order to heal from that. All right? So this is definitely what this full moon energy has brought to the surface for me. And I really feel like it's bringing a lot to the surface for many, many people. So this is why I wanted to come forward, share these messages, and do this reading for us. All right, I'm going to shuffle one more time. And let me tell you, I am someone that knows about disorders. I was diagnosed bipolar. Um, and, you know, that's one of those situations in where people are like, well, that's a lifelong thing. You're going to have to be medicated your whole life. No, that's absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. So I'm definitely speaking from experience there. Okay? I was able, I made the decision, I bit the bullet, and I faced it. And I decided that I wasn't going to allow it to, to control me. So I did what I needed to do to get balanced. And so from that point of view, now I can look at other people that are dealing with certain situations, whatever that might be, and be like, okay, I get it. You can get out of that. You absolutely can get out of that. And while I'm deciding that you will not walk all over me, you will not abuse me, From the, at the same time, I'm not going to really hold <laughs> that much <laughs> animosity, depending on the situation we dealt with. Um, I'm not going to really judge you or hold any more animosity towards you because I kind of get what you're going through from a certain, to a certain extent, right? So that's, that's the type of energy. That's the type of, um, mindset. I really feel like as a human collective, we all need to come to because that will serve to help heal all of us. As long as we continue to, to, to energetically put all these barriers and separation tactics between us. Um, and continue to think thoughts about each other, project energies towards each other that, you know, I'm better than you or this, that, and the other because you're you're an asshole, you did X, Y, and Z. I mean, that, all that kind of stuff, the more, that, th that right there, those are techniques put into place by those that want to keep us in separation consciousness. But when we start to accept our unity, we start to understand that we are all one, we are all parts of, individual parts of the same greater whole, you know, we're all brothers and sisters in this. We all deserve a chance to heal. Then the paradigm shifts. Then we all can change. We all have a better opportunity of growing and being stronger and better and healthier because we're all putting this energy in together. Okay? Awesome. 
Let's get into the cards. Overall energy. <laughs> We're looking at the Six of Cups. This is post full moon energy. Already, already, I'm personally resonating with this. Why? Because the Six of Cups is about the past, is about reminiscing, is about memories. It's also about um, past life relationships, deep soulmate connections. It's also about the inner child, okay? There is a lot of inner child work that needs to be done right, right now. And to be quite honest, this Pisces energy, the, the Pisces full moon energy, even though it's past already because it did, it did happen on Sunday, um, this past Sunday, which was the 26th? Yes, the 26th. Even though it happened then, you still can work with the energies a little bit. I would say until it goes until about, until it's the new moon, right? Um, uh, I'm hearing reconciling, reconnecting um, with the Six of Cups here. Six of Cups is coupled with the Queen of Cups. Boop, Pisces. This is unconditional love. This is compassion, okay? I just heard having compassion for your fellow man or woman. It doesn't matter, really. Um, we have the Nine of Cups in reverse. And we also have the Five of Pentacles in reverse. Okay? So, um, interesting. And I feel like, because I was thinking about this beforehand, before I even started this, like as I was collecting the energies and um, getting ready, getting prepared to do this reading, I feel like the Nine of Cups came to mind and in the reverse position. But I don't remember what I was thinking about at that time now. But anyway, um, okay. So there could be a lot of emotional volatility. All right? There could be some of us. Now, this is for everyone. This is for the whole human collective. You might be dealing with a lot of memories from the past um, that are very emotional in nature, that make you feel very emotional. You may feel like you need to drown your sorrows a little bit, okay? Um, and it's very interesting because we're talking water here, and look, we've got all of this water so far. And I'm just seeing, um, especially with the Nine of Cups in reverse, I'm just seeing intoxication, a lot of drinking could be a coping me mechanism. Just be careful of that. Um, I'm also seeing with the, with the Queen of Cups here, people will be really getting in tune with their emotions, but not just on a surface level, like getting in tune with your emotions in a very, very deep way, okay? Really coming to terms with why you feel, understanding why you feel a certain way. Why something, why some of these memories from the past that you're dealing with are, are drumming up such strong emotions. And with this woman here in the Queen of Cups, as she's looking into her cup, this is like me, this me is, I, I'm, under, I'm picking up an energy of um, understanding. Looking deep to understand, okay? This also, with the Queen of Cups, talks about heightened psychic activity. activity. So, uh, post full moon in Pisces, you may be feeling very, very connected with your intuition. Your intuition might be going through an upgrade right now. It's entirely possible. With the five of pentacles energy in reverse, what, I, what this is saying to, oh, also, I'm sorry, before I move forward, I'm also getting an energy of, with the nine of cups in reverse, finally reaching some sort of emotional balance to not be continuing to drown your sorrows anymore. Okay, so you could be becoming so emotional that you need to feel like you need to drown your sorrows in some sort of substance, most likely alcohol. That's what I'm picking up on here. Conversely, flip side of the coin, you might be gaining some serious emotional balance here with the Queen of Cups and with the Nine of Cups in reverse saying, I don't need to drown my sorrows anymore. There's also an energy of understanding, coming to another a, a new level of understanding of why certain wishes have not been fulfilled because the Nine of Cups is also a wish fulfillment card. But this is ultimately, this is through reminiscing on the past, thinking back on what might have happened in the past. Um, and so this is ultimately all serving to propel you forward because now you can approach the situation in a different way should you understand things differently, okay? With the Five of Pentacles in reverse here, ultimately this is coming, coming to terms with why you might feel like you're left out in the cold, why you have been left out in the cold recently. 
um, taking steps to no longer feel left out in the cold. This is bringing emotional balance into play to understand that no one can ever really leave you out in the cold except for yourself. What does that mean? Well, you, you could be like, well, what? It, wait a second, Eric. Like, people could be doing things to make me feel excluded. Sure, they could be. But look a little deeper. Is there something that you've done actively done to these people or to this person to get them to ice you out, to close you out of their life? Or is there some is there something that these people or this person is perceiving that you've done to them in order to quote make you feel like you're left out in the cold? Ultimately, they can they can ice you out, but that doesn't have to upset your sense of happiness, I guess we could say. Yeah? Okay, cool. Let's get into the storyline. Current set of energies, post-Pisces full moon. We've got the King of Pentacles in reverse. Okay. I just heard um, feeling like you lost your stability in some way. King of Pentacles is coupled with the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Uh, I feel an energy of being knocked off your high horse in a certain sense. King of Pentacles in reverse and the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. It, this is needing to regain some sort of financial or physical stability in order to move forward with some sort of new offer, some sort of, um, some form of commitment even. This could be understanding um, or coming to terms with why you or someone else may not have been able to offer some sort of commitment. Okay. Um, also, I'm getting an energy of why things haven't necessarily worked out the way you wanted them to. Um, I also am picking up an energy of, especially since they're here, the King of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles, someone could be working on drumming up the courage or the stability to make some sort of solid, substantial offer. This could be in business. This could be in relationships. But it would be, uh, especially with the King of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles here um, together, this could this is definitely some sort of committing energy, like really committing to some sort of business venture, uh, a, a relationship, like committing to um, being in a romantic relationship with, with, with one person, monogamous relationship, that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Moving forward. Uh, second set of current energies. We have the six of swords. So uh, moving forward, moving. This is also a reconciliation card to a certain extent. Um, and it's so crazy, too. I just want to point out, if you can see here, we've got the six of cups here. We've got the six of swords here. And we have the nine of cups in here. And it's reversed, which looks like a six. And sixes are numbers. Uh, six is a number of unconditional love and harmony within like home, family and relationships and stuff like that. And what else, or what are we talking about here, guys? The full moon in Pisces. And that's literally what Pisces is really all about when it's positively aspected. The balance between um, loving, love and, and unity and all that good stuff. So that's really cool. I just wanted to point that out. But anyway, so the Six of Swords here, this is moving to moving from rocky waters to calmer waters. So if we want to think back to the example I gave for um, in my personal experience, I actually, I absolutely did move from rocky waters to calmer waters, which was, which allowed me to reconnect again, which is awesome. Six of Swords is coupled with the page, I'm sorry, the Knight of Wands in reverse. All right. So there is definitely an energy of um, moving away from sort of, some sort of wishy-washy or player aspect of, um, uh, some sort of uh, that kind of lifestyle, um, wanting to be be more committal is what I just heard, especially with the King of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles here. Now those two are in reverse because they are energies that are building. It's blocked right now. This is something that's that's growing, that's developing. With the Knight of Wands in reverse, this is actively something. This is an energy that's being released. Okay. Um, this could be anything. This doesn't have to be just a player aspect. This could just be um, 
any sort of energy that is, I just heard non-committal. In whatever way that resonates with you. Uh huh. What else? There was something else I was starting to see here. Moving away from situations also that would keep you, like if you consider yourself to be a light worker or even a twin flame, um, or whatever it is that you're really passionate about, moving away from those circumstances that would block you from expressing that part of you, that would block you from um, expressing your light worker, your torch bearer, your spiritual warrior status. Because for me, the Knight of Wands can very much be the spiritual warrior, okay? So I'm picking up an energy for some of you or for some of us uh, in the human collective of moving away from situations that block you from expressing this part of your life, okay? In your in our current challenges here, post-Pisces full moon, what are we currently dealing with? We've got, look at that, the Ten of Swords, upright, okay? So this is the end. This is the release. I'm hearing this is the stop of the blockage. What blockage? It depends on your specific situation. But ultimately, there are endings coming into play here. Okay? And this could be this could be endings to some very painful situations. But it's all for the better. It's serving the highest good. You are reached this ending because, or you are challenged with reaching this ending because it's time to release it. It's time to move on. You've learned the lessons here. It's time to let this go. Okay, whatever has been plaguing you about a certain situation, whatever has been plaguing you about um, or whatever, like maybe even a specific person. If you're a twin flame and you have been caught, stuck on this one person, it's time to just detach and let go. Okay, once you do that, then you will free up the space and you clear it out. Once you detach and clear out the space, you'll free up the energetic space for the universe to either bring that person back to you if they are truly meant to be with you, if they are your true twin flame, or bring someone in that actually is your twin flame, or someone that is, if you're not a twin flame, bring someone in that is a much better energetic match for you, vibrational match for you, yeah? Ten of Swords is coupled with the Eight of Wands in reverse. Current challenge is... Releasing situations that have caused a blockage in communication. Ending that cycle. And the specific and, and the, 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 the strong message that's coming through with this is this is not something that you can just put off on the other person and be like, well, well, if they get old, once they get over it, then I'll, I'm good. No. Sure, they have to get over it too. But you have to, it has to start with you. You can't sit here and require someone else to do something first. If you really want this blockage to be removed, you've got to do your own work for it. And then you have to remain receptive to it. Okay? So I'm talking like, do the energetic work personally to clear away the baggage, clear away the resentment, clear away the, uh, the, the fear even. Because we have, we have reconciliation here, okay? We have reconciliation. We have it in the Six of Swords. We have it in the Six of Cups. And now we have communication. All right. So you have, if you really want to reconcile with someone, then you've got to do the energetic clearing first. You've got to do your own energetic clearing so that the energies or the universe can conspire with you to set up the circumstance for that reconciliation to happen. Okay. Finally, upcoming energies, post Pisces full moon, we've got page of cups. Look at that. We were just talking about reconciliation. Here is that, that initial icebreaker, the communication. And what I'm really getting what I'm, on a deeper level, what I'm getting from this Page of Cups is a deeper understanding of the self. Okay, because the Page of Cups 
on an emotional level because the page of cups can talk about emotional understanding or getting to know yourself on an emotional level and so now once you understand a little more about yourself now on an emotional level you'll be free to like start something new to start that communication to open up those lines of communication again and this remember this is look this is just a page okay so we're starting off we're starting from the bottom don't do it i know it i know i hear it already <laughs> <laughs> I hear it already, guys. I'm not even going to say it. Um, <laughs> but we're starting from the bottom and we're working our way up, okay, with the Page of Cups. But this is definitely communication that happens once people release the baggage, the drama, the resentment, the anger, the fear, the insecurities that keeps this communication aid of wands blocked, okay? Page of Cups is coupled with <gasps> the King of Cups, upright. Yo. Y'all. <laughs> We've got the counterparts here, guys. The Queen of Cups is in the in the overall energy, and in the upcoming energies, we've got the King of Cups with the Page of Cups. And look, and look, and look, even the page can be seen as the, look, don't mind my nail, sorry. <laughs> the page can be seen as a Pisces card. Why? Because of that fish, this fish that's right there. Dude, guys, you can't make this shit up, man. Man. So here's the deal, all right? We have... What's happening here on a collective level, on a human collective level, what's happening here is this Pisces full moon is helping us really come into some serious emotional balance between masculine and feminine, okay? I mean, this is, this is beautiful, beautiful energy. So, On an overall level, I do see communication coming forward, or at least this, the energies of this full moon, okay, even because we're post full moon right now, so I'm talking like post full moon energies. This is helping people come to terms with things, come to understand their emotions on a deeper level, grow up emotionally, like reach some emotional maturity. Like we went from the page straight to the king, y'all. Okay, this is the divine masculine. This is masculine energy um, coming forward with a message of love. And remember what I was saying here, we've got the king of pentacles and the ace of pentacles, okay? Somebody wants to commit. Somebody wants to make a commitment. But this is blocked right now. Why is this blocked right now? Because someone is, we're, we're, we're shifting, guys. We're shifting with the, with the Six of Swords here, we're moving into spiritual warrior status, or at the very least, we're releasing energies of being a player and and, and, and just a one-night stand type energy, okay? But now, the challenge we still have to get through is releasing, ending the situations, releasing ourselves from these painful situations that are blocking communication, all right? This really doesn't just have to be in love. This can just be in per interpersonal relationships with friends or family. But this is definitely emotionally involved. Okay? So it makes perfect sense. We've got soulmates that could be reconnecting. We've got old friends from childhood that could be reconnecting. I mean, guys, the possibilities are endless here. This is a collective reading for, like, the whole human collective. Okay? So, boop, there's that. All right, so let's... Go ahead and close out the reading with some guidance from the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. I just want to shuffle this up three times. Mm, Spirit, please bring us the best messages. And what... It, just give us the best insight into the energies that we'll be experiencing post-full moon, yeah? I'm going to take three cards, please, Spirit. Woo! One, two, and three. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so what we've got here, we've got the three of earth. And I'm going to be getting into the book for this. We've got the five of fire. 
Okay, now this is very much like a five of swords, a five of swords or a five of um, wands energy. Okay, this is combativeness. This is competitive, com com competitive, competitive, com competitiveness. There it is. And we also have the seven of fire, and the seven of fire is reversed. All right. So already I can tell that this is just general guidance. What to look out for is what Spirit just said. So, three of earth. And I will master this deck soon. I just got, I just need time for it. Keywords are ambition, sowing seeds, groundwork, energy, investment, sacrifice, fertility, and outcomes. Key phrases, take time, oh, I'm sorry, time to make preparations, risking future goals and ambitions. Investment or sacrifice equals reward. A time of restriction or adversity. Increased opportunity. People noticed commitment and dedication. What was I was just talking about? Someone wants to commit. Be sure of your motives. Maintain intimacy and connection. I mean, that is all that we're talking about here. Um... The Three of Earth represents a time of preparation. It is a time to sow the seeds born of thought, need, and desire in fertile soil and do what is required in order to make these seeds grow. It is a time for you to do the necessary groundwork. Remember, the outcome can only be equal to the investment you are willing to make in the here and now. The Three of Earth can also symbolize a time of sacrifice in the weeks and months ahead. There may be choices offered that appear as limitations or restrictions. While these choices might bring about feelings of reluctance, frustration, and annoyance, put them aside and focus on what the end result will bring. The future may also offer moments of adversity and hardship that make you want to give up, which is reflected here in the Five of Fire. If you find your resolve challenged over the weeks and months ahead, know that all that you hope to achieve is dependent upon your willingness to make a commitment now and then honor that commitment in the end. Hello, King of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, commitment. Ooh, ciao. I, you can't make this shit up, y'all. Do so knowing that it will be noticed and respected. It may even increase the opportunities that come your way. Whether it be further education, new work responsibilities, saving for a new home, or building a business, now is the time to look for realistic, grounded options and to get and to then get in touch with those who have the knowledge and information you require in order to determine if your objectives can be achieved and the best course of action for you to take. The Three of Earths asks, what are you willing to do now in order to achieve the outcome you desire? Excellent. Next, we have the Five of Fire. Five of Fire, keywords, rivalry, competition, aggression, bullying, conflict, discord, chaos, and obstacles. Key phrases, a time of chaos, conflict or confrontation, a battle for control or dominance, a desire for power, influence, or wealth. Do not judge or condemn others. Base your concerns in fact. Avoid pack mentality behavior. Make no place for bullying. Focus on your vision, not what others are doing. The five of fire symbolizes a time of chaos, conflict, or confrontation, either at hand or head. Somehow, I'm sorry, someone now may see themselves or others as a rival or competitor and may be willing to use ruthless or aggressive measures to come out on top. Rivalry between people and a battle for control and dominance can lead one person to place obstacles in the path of another in order to slow their progress or deter them completely. Why? Because they want to be the one with the power, influence, or potential wealth and will not allow a competitor to take what they believe is theirs. This ugly situation is now often made worse by technology and social media. Rumors can spread, lies told, and reputations destroyed, and all can be accomplished with almost complete anonymity. At its extreme, we can see bullying in the modern age as a gladiatorial sport for voyeurs. A victim is thrown into the wolf, thrown to the wolves while an, while an aggressor sits upon their throne and spectators scream for blood, following their leader blindly and embarking a pack mentality. 
I'm sorry, embracing a pack mentality. But these wolves do not hunt for survival. They hunt for sport and recreation, or simply because another asked them to. All too often, they hide their attacks behind a belief that it is their right to question and then judge and condemn the life choices of another. I was wondering what this card was really talking about, and it's talking about this mind control that we're dealing with with the moon cycles. That following blindly with pack mentality, okay? 144, whoa, wow, 104, on the counter, y'all. Um, so this is definitely something to look out for, especially if you're gaining your emotional balance, you're moving away from things that no longer serve you, you're claiming your sovereignty, you're doing all this work and bettering yourself, you absolutely can, I guess, expect to a certain extent to deal with some backlash from people that are not doing the same thing or that might be jealous of you. Don't let that bother you, guys. All right, I'm going to move on to the last card, Seven of Fire. In reverse, divination, signs, heeding intuition, looking within, seeking answers, discovery, awareness, trust. Key phrases, heed your intuition, a feeling of recognition, inexplicable coincidences, moments that repeat. Personal interpretation is crucial. Only you know the answer. Look beyond the surface. Observe and be aware. Um... Okay, so the seven of fire in reverse is the potential blockage there means divination means to foretell or predict the future. Sometimes our intuition guides us and at other times it is simple awareness born of observation and paying attention. At other times it is a marriage of both. Every day we are given signs that if heeded can reveal what is to come. The seven of fire reversed represents a need to watch for those signs and heed these signs, heed the insights they offer. Observe the people around you. Look closely at patterns of behavior that repeat and pay attention to words spoken that lack m mirroring actions. Take note of promises broken, overreactions to questions, and inability to meet the eyes and laughter that seems forced or contrived. They are all indications that there is more going on. Learn to watch, learn to listen. Heed what your observations and senses are telling you. If you have a tendency to, to dismiss them, don't. Don't ignore them. If your gut tells you something is not as it seems, then look beyond the surface and see what is truly there, and then address it. The reversed seven of fire cautions you against being dismissive. Pay attention, look, observe, discern the truth, Address the contradictions and inconsistencies. See the signs, even the ones that might seem a little obscure and insignificant. They may foretell a future that is not in accordance with your goals. This absolutely resonates with the psychic abilities, the psychic uh, nature, whatever, if you're opening up to that, okay? We need to understand that the universe communicates with us constantly. I wanna take my glasses off so there's no glare. The universe communicates with us constantly. And a lot of the time we brush those signs off as whatever, it's just a coincidence or whatever, um, whatever, I'm just going crazy. No, number one, you're not going crazy. Number two, there is no such thing as coincidence. Okay. <laughs> there is no such thing as coincidence. So, and at, especially as we're ascending into the, a fourth dimensional reality, um, now that doesn't mean that, that we're going to like look different. It's just that we're experiencing a fourth dimensional reality. And that means we are experiencing existence outside of time and space. So synchronicities are a big part, are a major side. Like if you're seeing synchronicities all the time, mostly in the form of numbers, like you're seeing repeating numbers pop up all over the place. Um, and sometimes it's like extreme, like it's happening in ways that couldn't even even begin to be possible. That is what this seven of wands, I'm sorry, well, yeah, but seven of fire in reverse is talking about, okay? Um, understanding that, you know, even in the most subtle ways, the universe, God, source, angels, spirit guides, whatever, is all, they are always, always communicating with us. And now you have, especially moving through this full moon in Pisces, you have an opportunity to really get yourself anchored into that kind of, consciousness that kind of mindset so that you can expand from that as you move forward in life yeah everybody's got psychic ability everybody has extra sensory ability some uh, we're all just uh differently oriented some are stronger than others in certain areas like i'm very clairaudient but when it comes to clairvoyance like physically like seeing i, I have trouble with that 
Um, and so that there are better, you know, I mean, the spectrum is ongoing. You could resonate in any way, but it's really time for us to really start to get connected with our intuitions, with our psychic abilities, with all of the ways that the universe is communicating with us. Okay, guys? Okay, I'm going to stop rambling now. It's been over an hour. But I helped, I helped, uh, um, oh, blah, 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 blah. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope that was helpful for you. I hope it brought some clarity to you, like. Um, and yeah, much love to you all. Yeah, and I look forward to connecting with you guys again soon. Okay, take care. Mwah! Bye.